Welcome to another badass video from Network Engineer Academy. And by the way, this is video number seven. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, make sure you go back and watch those videos first because I'm walking you and this process, I'm building this network in order, okay? Now, what's gonna happen in this video? I'm gonna walk you through and just to make sure that these computers are able to communicate with each other. And remember, these two computers belong on VLAN 10. The computer on top be uh, belongs on VLAN 20, right? And we went to the router, right? And let me show you, okay? This is what I'm gonna do on the router. I'm gonna do enable, and then I'm gonna do show, the running configuration. And that's basically what I'm doing here. I'm telling the, the, the router, hey, show me how you are configured, okay? So I'm gonna go down and then I'm gonna find exactly what we did in the previous video, right? We created, well, first we enable the, the port, right? The port where the router is connected to on the switch. And what we did, we created two virtual or sub interfaces, right? For VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. And we assign an IP address, right? To that sub interface. And the IP address, that's the gateway for those computers, right? In this case from VLAN 10, that's for the computers that belong on VLAN 10. That will be the gateway, okay? And that's exactly what we did. So, so far this is what we have. So now, in this video, let me walk you through really quick, okay? Because I know probably you're thinking, okay, Jorge, I know what's next. So let's get into it. First, we need to go to the PCs, okay? So let me go on this PC, command prompt, and let me do this, IP config. And as you can see, I do not have a gateway. So that's an issue because remember, for this computer to communicate with another computer from another network, it needs a gateway. So let's change that. So I'm gonna go to IP configuration, gateway, and for this network, I remember that we did 192.168.1.1. And I did it wrong. And 1.1, one, one. okay. So now I go back just to make sure, and now I have a default gateway. So that's good. So now I'm gonna make sure on the other PC, it has the same, because it belongs to the same VLAN, the same network, VLAN 10. 192.168.1.1, one. it looks good, I'm out. So now I'm gonna go to the HR uh, department computer, this computer. So this one belongs on VLAN 20, another network, not the same network. And I remember that we did, right? We use that first available IP address for the gateway. And if this is, um, and for this one is 129. There we go, okay? So we're good and we're good. So now they have a gateway, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go on PC7 and I'm gonna see, first let me connect to my neighbor, you know, PC6. So let me do pink, 192, 168, 1.6. And bam, we are getting a reply, that's good. So now let's do the other one from the other network, from the other VLAN. And that's 192, 168, one, 150, and not good. Okay, something is wrong, okay? Request timeout, let's see another one. And nope, it's not good. Okay, so let's think and analyze, okay? Like what's going on right here? And I know probably, Jorge, you know, you did everything that you were supposed to do on the router, but you forgot to do something and the switch, remember, you have to do something at the end of the router and the switch. And that has to do with exactly trunking. So let's go here and configure that. And I don't know what port am I using, so let me do this quick. And I'm gonna use the Gigabit 01. So Gigabit Ethernet 01, okay. So let's configure this port. So I'm gonna exit out, oh, this is not good. Okay, so now, so I can clear the screen. So let me do this, um, config T, and then interface, uh, gigabit, I think it was 01. So let's see, gigabit 01, and then let me do to, to, to switch port. Let's see, switch port, come on. Mode, mode, uh, Trunk, 
anything else, no, boom, there we go, okay. So now it's up, it went down and went up, okay. So that should be good, so now this is what I'm gonna do first. I just wanna make sure, do show VLAN, and see so we have those VLANs, okay, great. So, once again, like right now, it's going through that process that I told you, like the spanning tree protocol, a process that it goes through, and it takes 30, 45 seconds, and yes, we can go to that port, and I told you this by, by now, right? We can use the fast port and enable uh, BPDU guard, but we're not gonna have the time to go through the process on this lab. So now it's green, so let's see if it works now, okay? Because remember, we forgot to do uh, the trunking on this end on the switch. So let me go on this computer, and I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna try to say hello to 150, and it better work, and if it's not working, okay, that's mean we have to troubleshoot more of the issue. Oh, it's working, you see? Now you're probably thinking, okay, Jorge, what happened? Request timeout. The first time they're gonna communicate, right? They go through this process on ARP, you know, the address resolution protocol, okay? So that's the reason why. But if I do that one more time, you know, I get the four replies, no problem, because now they know, you know, where uh, the other computer is. So they're gonna be able to communicate more, um, to point, point, to point more uh, efficient, okay? So right now, I mean, everything is working the way that, that, that it's supposed to, okay? So we are now completely done, and everything that I wanna walk you through here, okay? So we have, you know, our business is up and running, we're good and everything, but remember, right? Our big goal, objective, is for these computers to be able to communicate all the way over here, okay? So now, in this video, really quick, the only thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, Make sure that this computer has an IP address and also we're gonna assign the IP address on the router and that will be the default gateway for this computer. And yes, more likely you don't have a computer directly connected to the router. You don't, okay? You don't. You have the computer connected to the switch and the switch to the router. But remember, you know, we're just creating a small lab just to make sure that we have connectivity, okay? So let me go really quick on that PC. And this is the network that we're gonna use. And as you can see, this is a class A private IP address, and we are not using the default subnet mask, okay? Based on the cider notation number that we have here, we are using the default subnet mask of a class C, okay? So, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put um, PC11, so I'm gonna do, because right here we can use any number and the last acted. All, any number from one all the way to 254. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the number one for the gateway and I'm gonna use the number 11 for the PC. So I'm gonna open the PC and I'm gonna go to IP configuration and I'm gonna do 10, 10, 10, that 11. And then I'm not using the default something mask. So that's the one that we are using and might as well do the gateway as well. And that's gonna be one, that's the IP that we're gonna put in on the router, okay? So that looks good. So now here, let me plug it in on gigabit zero zero just to make sure. And by the way, probably you're noticing something right here because I just noticed that. You know, you have a line with dash, that means that we are using a crossover cable. And you use a crossover cable when you have like a computer connected to a router directly. Or when you have a switch to a switch or when you have a router to a router. And the other ones, right? The other ones, they're like a straight line. We are using a straight through cable, okay? And this one right here, that's a serial connection. And that's because we're using uh, some type of an uh, ISP to make that happen, okay? ISP, remember, the internet service provider, okay? But once again, I just wanna make sure this network is up and running. Uh, so yes, let me, uh, I forgot, so let me one, one more time, we're gonna use gigabit zero zero. Okay, so let's go to the router, to that command line interface, and I'm gonna do enable, config T, and interface gigabit zero zero, and then I'm gonna do IP address, and this is gonna be my gateway, so I remember that we use the number one, 255, 255, 255, 255, that's uh, um, the something mask that we are using, enter, and now I'm gonna do that magic command to, to um, to turn it on, no shutdown, and boom, we are up and running. Um, how do I know that? Well, let's go to that PC and make sure that it's able to say hello and be able to talk to the gateway. So I'm gonna go to that PC, 
I'm going to go to the command prompt and I'm going to do ping my gateway. And success. We are able to communicate with our gateway. I can do IP config just to make sure that we have IP, IP config, that we have our IP settings correctly and we are in business. Okay. So, you know, now let's start the process and working, you know, with routers. Okay. And that's exactly what I'm going to start on the next video. And that's going to be video number eight. So make sure you go uh, on video number eight, because now I'm going to talk about, you know, and let's see, we can use rep, we can use uh, EIGRP, or we can use uh, OSPF. Let's use OSPF because that's one of the biggest protocols, dynamic routing protocols out there. So I'm going to do that. And once again, you know, that can, and my coaching program that I have, okay, I go through this process and teaching the CCNA routing and switching certification, and there is over 120 videos. So that's no way that I can give you all of the details about OSPF and one or two videos. I'm going to, whatever it comes through, that's exactly what I'm going to provide to you. And once again, I just need to make sure that this computer, it's able to communicate all the way to the computers right here. Okay. And I'm going to walk you through an, a scenario as well and how to use a, 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 a static, okay, um, route. Like we're going to go to a router and I'm going to tell them, Hey, for you to get to this network, this is the way that you have to go to. Okay. And that's just basically doing a static, but then we're going to do that OSPF dynamic. So it can be fast and it's going to be fun. So make sure you go to video number eight so I can walk you through that process.